Alright, back again, Luke here, and today what I want to do is just show you how you can make a really quick, uh, simple DIN connector tester. And you can do it, uh, you can make it out of a lot of the household things that you might have laying around, uh, or if you're into, like, electronics or, uh, repairs, you probably have a lot of these, uh, parts laying around as it is. But, um, the reason why I decided to make this connector is because I was stuck at one point in time where I didn't have any, uh, like, digital way of testing to see if there was a signal coming from the device. I didn't have anything that lit up or anything that made a sound. And uh, I was kind of, like, at my wit's end trying to figure out where I'm going to get my uh, video signal from, where am I going to get my audio signal from on some of these older machines. So I made this little uh, this little cheap device here, and it does find out the connections and where you where you're getting your video and your audio from. It's not uh, by any means the most professional, but hopefully it'll be able to help out those who don't have the money to a afford uh, one of the uh, specialty connection uh, testing devices, or b who are just kind of like. Um, trying to fix something in a, in a rush. Uh, it's not by any means professional and I just want to make that clear. But um, if you have an old game machine, this happens to be a Mega Drive 2, uh, if you look on the back here you'll notice that uh, there's a connection. It looks like a honeycomb connection here and it says AV out on the back. kind of looks like an S-Video connection. From this uh, connection here you can get your video, you can get your sound, and sometimes you can get S-Video. Now, what a lot of people do is, because these uh, DIN connections are a, a bit of a hassle, what you'll see people do is uh, the same thing that uh, I've done here, um, as well as many people like Alec John, um, Big Bad Daddy 11, and MN12 Bird have done the same thing. But that's an AV mod on the back of your uh, Mega Drive. Now, this makes it really easy because you can bypass that uh, kind of like frustrating DIN connection in the back here. And uh, you can just plug in a pair of, or just a regular pair of cables, and uh, you'll be all set. But if you're not somebody who's really good with a soldering pen or a drill, uh, this little device that I made up here might be something that you can use. And uh, if you're really, really willing to, um, to like go down to a local hardware store or go down to uh, Radio Shack and pick up a, a DIN connector, uh, you can make this work. So if you remember before, um, when I got this machine here, I didn't have a, an AV uh, cable for it, and in fact, these Mega Drives are really hard to find AV cables for in Japan. So what I did is I went to good old hard off, like I usually do, and I found just a, a regular DIN connection. And uh, this DIN connector had multiple uh, cords on the uh, the bottom here; it just had multiple like uh, jacks coming off of it. But on the inside here, it had eight pins coming out. And what was nice about those eight pins is that it fit inside the Mega Drive 2, and uh, all of the pins made a connection. So all I needed to do is find out where my video and audio signals were coming from, and the rest of the pins that I could I could just snap right off. And that's what I did. I found out where the video was coming from and the audio. I snapped off the extra pins that I didn't need. I wired up uh, the audio and um, the video cables to the end, and uh, this thing works great. There's no problems with it. So the key question is, how did I find out where the video and the audio was on this uh, DIN? Well, what I did is I took a regular uh, a regular jack. This thing is like something that you could probably find in an old pair of speakers. Or if you have uh, some AV cables around that you've modded up, uh, you can probably find a couple of loose ends laying around here. I just took one end here. And what I did is I soldered up two wires. Now one wire is soldered up to the pin in the center and then one is to the ground casing around the outside. And I made these wires quite long. Um, the reason for that is because sometimes if you have a TV that's sitting way up here, it's really difficult to get at. So if you have long wires, then you can leave your uh, machine down here and make it easier for testing. And on the other end here, what I did is I got a, uh, a couple of needles. These are like sewing needles, but they're a little bit bigger than sewing needles. They're kind of uh, a little bit thicker. So the eyes in the back, uh, on the uh, loops here, are a little bit bigger, um, which made it nicer to, um, to connect to these wires here. Now, how did I connect the needle to the wire? Uh, this is where I used a, a regular twist tie. I took the sheathing off a twist tie, and because the twist tie is metal, um, I was able to twist it around, uh, get it to fit through the eye hooks uh, in these pins, and um, I did use my soldering pen to solder the wires uh, to the um, twist ties, and then make it a solid connection. But uh, even if you don't have a soldering pen, you can still twist it up, and as long as it makes a connection, you'll be okay. And what I did here is I just used some red electrical tape here to... Uh, to emphasize the center pin and then the black one is to uh, uh, 
uh, kind of represent the outer casing for this one. And what's nice about this little little device here, I mean, it can be made out of a lot of the stuff that you have laying around the house. I mean, definitely if you have somebody who's into sewing, you'll have the, the pins laying around and that's not a problem. And uh, if you happen to be doing something with like uh, speaker jacks and uh, you have a couple of old speaker cables laying around that you no longer need, you can just use those and uh, you're all set. This cable here can be used to test audio and video. It doesn't matter as long as it's plugged into the right part on the TV. So what we'll do here is we got our Mega Drive 2. It's hooked up. We got the power hooked up. But we're going to use this here and we're going to try and find our video and then maybe if we have time we'll check and see if we can find the audio. So let's plug this in here. Uh, this is our video jack that we're going to use here. And on the back here, this might be a little bit difficult to hold, but uh, because our casing on the outside here actually has the uh, the ground on the outside, what we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, our black end here and we're going to push this around the outside of the casing. Kind of make sure that it's somewhat in there. Uh, hopefully you can see that a little bit. If not, I'll shine the flashlight on it here. So that's just on the outside of the casing. Now, when we turn the power on here, um, what we're going to do is we're just kind of probe around uh, in the back here to try and find out where our video signal is coming from. We're not going to hold it in the one spot for a long time. We're just going to kind of look at the monitor up here. And once we get a video signal, we know which pin is our video. And you can use like a black marker or a white marker in this case, or uh, even a colored marker uh, to um, show the different pins, which one's video, which one's audio, uh, left and right. This thing will essentially put out uh, video and it puts out mono audio sound. And if you want to bridge the audio uh, to both speakers, then you can have it do a somewhat uh, kind of like a, a uh, I, I, I guess it's kind of like a, an echoed uh, mono sound, but um, nonetheless, we we're going to try and find the, uh, the audio signal and the video signal. So right now, we're going to look for our video signal. We're going to turn the power on here. And uh, what might happen here as we're testing the DIN is you might see some flashing going on in the TV. It really depends on which point uh, you find. So, well, look at that first try. <laughs> Here's our, uh, our video signal. That's pretty lucky. Um, and now if you look down here, um, we can just keep this held in like this. Um, and if we look up here, our video is still playing. But if you look down here, this one is going to be our video, sig uh, video signal here. So it's going to be the uh, second one from the left. Uh, let me see here. Second one from the... Let me see, two down from the right and one in to the left uh, is going to be our, um, our video signal. And like I said, you can use a paint marker or something like that to find uh, where your video is and make sure you mark it. So we got our video. That's not a problem. Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch this around here. And I know this is just one-handed, so bear with me here for a minute. <clears throat> now we got it on the audio. So hopefully we'll turn this up a little bit. And hopefully we'll be able to find our audio. Now, it might make a couple of different sounds here, but as you can see, this is where our audio is coming from. And it's not going to display video because we have it in the audio uh, slot. But as you can see, it's a really simple device, and I know it's not the most professional by any means. But if you don't have any sort of tools where you can test out where the signal's coming from, and um, you don't have like anything that uh, that's at your disposal uh, really easily, this is something that you can make out of a lot of the stuff that you have at home, and you can find out where your audio and video signals are coming from uh, in a short amount of time. But something that I thought I'd just share with you guys. Um, if it's something that you're interested in trying to make, then that's great. Um, if you don't like it at all, then that's great as well. But um, it's just something that, like I said, it's worked for me. And uh, as you can see, the results here kind of prove it, that it does work. Um, it just takes a little bit of probing around. And you only have eight slots to choose from. So in general, it won't take you too long to find out where your video and where your audio is coming from. But just a short little uh, video here, a short little uh, kind of tip video on something that you can make from uh, like a, a bunch of um, uh, spare parts you have laying around your room and how you can make a DIN connector uh, tester here from all that stuff and uh, be on your way to gaming here in no time flat. But like always, I'll put up another video here soon, so thanks for watching.